These are the top 10 oldest images of Jesus in the world. Number 10, the sarcophagus of Adelphia, 340 AD. The sarcophagus of Adelphia, now in the museum in Syracuse, Sicily, was found in the rotunda of Adelphia inside the catacombs of San Giovanni. It has three layers of depictions of Bible scenes. On the top, Adam and Eve, the denial of Peter with the cockerel, Jesus healing bleeding woman, Moses receiving the tablets. On the right are the scenes depicting Abraham and Isaac, Christ healing the blind, the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves, raising the son of the widow of nine. And last, the lower register shows Shadrach, Mesach, and Abingo refusing pagan worship, the miracle at Cana of turning water into wine, the adoration of the Magi, Adam and Eve and the serpent of the tree of knowledge, and finally, Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey. Now, some of you right now might be thinking, if this is number 10, are you telling me you have nine more that predate 340 AD? And yes, I do. Which brings us to the next one. The Catacombs of Kamadilla, dated to around 325 AD. Here we have our first depiction of Jesus with the Alpha and Omega. It's also one of the first of a bearded Jesus. As you will see later in the video, the earliest depictions of Jesus He's beardless. He looks a lot younger. In this one right here, we have the prototypical bearded Jesus that will stay as the norm for the time going forward up until right now. The catacombs of Kamadilla were used for burials until the 6th century. Later, Christian underground cemeteries transformed into a place of worship of martyrdom. Restoration of a basilica underground were made by several popes until the 9th century. A sign that the catacombs were still, at that time, a place of pilgrimage for devout Christians. Number 8. The Catacombs of Marcellinus and Peter. Now I had this one dated to 315 AD. Some have it later. They all have them in the 4th century. Peter and Marcellinus died in the year 304 AD. And as far as we know, the catacombs were built not long after. This is one of the biggest catacombs of the ancient Christian world. There is about 20,000 skeletons discovered in these catacombs. Some of the images in here are not just Christian either. We have a depiction of Orpheus holding the lyre. We also have a giant fresco of different Bible scenes. The most iconic of all is the picture of Jesus putting his hand out to Mary. This is mostly what these ancient depictions of Jesus look like. Number 7. Hinton St. Mary Mosaic. I had this one dated to 305 AD. It appears to be a portrait bust of Jesus as a central motif, similar to the Orpheus style mosaics, with animals around him, his face in the middle, interpreting a Christian context representing good defeating evil flanking it as two rectangular panels featuring dogs hunting deer. The central circle surrounds a portrait bust of a man with a Cairo behind his head, which means Christ, flanked with two pomegranates next to his head, a symbol of Messiah. Some people think this is Constantine. However, most people do believe this is probably a depiction of Jesus because of the toga. Number 6, the Catacomb of Priscilla, 275 AD. We have figures of the Madonna and the Child, Prophet Isaiah, and a depiction of the Annunciation is also shown, Mary with Jesus on her lap. The Catacomb of Priscilla is found inside of a quarry, which was used for Christian burials from the late 2nd century all the way through the 4th century. 
This catacomb is named after Manius Glabrio, his wife Priscilla. He is said to have become a Christian and was killed on the orders of Domitian. The wall paintings inside of the catacomb include early Christian symbols and the Good Shepherd depicting feeding his lambs with the crowing cock on his right and left hand. Number five, the Epitaph of Severa. Here we have a depiction of the three magi adoring the baby Christ in the arms of Mary. The epitaph is from a woman named Severa from the catacomb of Priscilla. The inscription reads, May you live in God. The epitaph is thought to have predated the catacombs and was brought there afterwards. The figure standing on the right looks like to be Joseph pointing to Mary although some have theorized that it may be the prophet Balaam pointing to the star in Numbers 24, 17. It states, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the people of Sheth. Number four. 235 AD, the Calixtus Catacombs. Here we have a depiction of Jesus being baptized by John. This is a tomb of several popes from the second to fourth century. It's also known as the Crypt of the Popes. And in here, we find many depictions of Jesus, mostly with no beard, holding wands in his hand. Another depiction of him with the lamb around his neck as the good shepherd. Also, he have the famous turning water into wine at Cana. It is the typical early Christian depiction of Jesus with the toga and no beard. Throughout the catacombs, Kairos litter the entire place. Number three, the Dura Europa's church, 225 AD. This is thought to be by some scholars as the oldest depiction of Jesus. The depictions we have in this church are of Jesus healing the paralytic and of also the Samaritan women at the well. Jesus walking on water with Peter. We can just barely make out the two bodies on the water and the ship in the distant background. The Good Shepherd, as we've seen in the previous two catacombs, is also found in the church of Dura Europus. There's also many other Jewish depictions of Abraham and David and Isaiah, as well as Jesus, at this location. In the year 256, the town was abandoned after the Persian siege. Number two, the catacombs of Domitilla, dated to sometime in the second century. From what I've gathered and talking to a few scholars about this, might be the only second century depiction of Jesus that exists, and arguably the oldest depiction of Jesus that exists. I don't have an exact date to put on this, so I'm just going to say second century. But as you can see, the Good Shepherd, once again, this is probably the most common image of Jesus in the earliest days. And number one, the oldest depiction of Jesus in the world is called the Alexa Manos Graffiti. And this is a picture of a donkey being crucified with Alexi Manos Sabate Theon, which means Alexi Manos worships his God. It must be one of someone who knows Alexi Manos in Rome who is cracking a joke about his religion. Some people would argue that this is not a depiction of Jesus, but I think it's fair to say there's enough here. He's on the crucifixion. He's being worshipped. Whether it's a donkey's head or a man's head, the intent is to portray him as Jesus. Now, we don't have any photographs of Jesus. They're all just depictions. So I don't see a big deal of it being having an animal head or not. It just shows that the artists of what they thought of him. But to get a little conspiratorial on you, there is something interesting about his head being a donkey. We have writings from Posidonius around 70 BCE, Apollonius Molon around the same time, both from the island of Rhodes, make the claim that 
that Antiochus IV, after raiding the Temple of Jerusalem, found an idol of a man riding on top of a donkey. Manasius in 200 BCE talks about someone looting the Jerusalem Temple and finding a donkey head idol. The book of Zechariah has a messianic prophecy of a man entering Jerusalem on a donkey, which is probably where the gospel writers borrow it from. However, there was a Gnostic document called the birth of Mary in which Zechariah, who is the father of John the Baptist, goes inside of the temple of Jerusalem and he becomes muted because he sees a god with the head of an ass and he can't speak until his son is born because the god muted him so that he would not tell anybody what he saw. Now, why am I telling you all these stories? The reason why I'm telling you all these stories is because I think it's possible, not saying this is the case guaranteed, but it's quite possible that this graffiti artist might have heard some of these stories and might have conflated the idea of a Jewish Messiah and a donkey deity. Tacitus, in the early second century, gives us a history of the Jews in which he tells the story of Moses and the Israelites starving and thirsty in the desert in which they are led by a pack of donkeys to water in which Tacitus then says that they worship the image of the donkey because of this moment. So for Tacitus to know this information and for the other writers who I mentioned to have this type of mindset or thought of what these stories are. It makes sense that somebody in Rome might know this or hear these stories as well. So, with that being said, this is why I have the Alexamanos graffiti as the number one oldest depiction of Jesus in the world and the only remaining image of Jesus of the first century. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did I miss something? Is my dating off? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And um, you have just attained true gnosis.